Welcome to Haxby Shed and part 7 of repairing this Elliott 10M shaper and in this part I'm mostly making an oiler system and fitting the bull gear. I hope you find it useful but before we really get started I'm just going to quickly show you some shelving I made to hold my milling machine tooling. I didn't video putting these up because honestly it's just putting up shelves isn't it and it's not that interesting but it's quite a convenient place to put my int 30 adapters and then at each end I've got an arbor this is 27 millimeter and this is one inch I've got a shelf above um, that's for my spindexer and the tailstock for that and the shelves are adjustable so that's really useful just here I've got the vertical head I'll try and show you sitting on a metal cupboard now I did think perhaps that this would be my flammable storage cupboard but actually I decided it's more useful for my milling tools. Now it's fastened to the wall so I can't push it forward and tip all this over, that's good. And this milling head, it's quite close to the table on the mill so, you know, it's quite heavy but it's still a reasonable lift. There's a bit of a story behind these shelves because they came from a bed. Um, okay, what's the story? <laughs> well, one of my daughters said, oh I've got this bed, does anybody want it? Everybody said no, and I said, right, I'll have it for the wood, thanks very much. And then, okay, that was four days ago. Today, one of my daughters said, has anybody got a bed? <laughs> well, I've got some nice shelves. Anyway, back to the shaper. Well, that's gone in nicely. I've got the gear on inside and the bronze washer and everything. Well I should have more confidence because the casing went straight on without any adjustment. There's a slight tight spot on it. That's free. That's a little bit tight. But it'll soon wear. It's only just here. I bought various bits. 1 8 BSP fittings. 4 mm pipe. And I'm going to use them for the oiler system for the internal shafts and bronze bushes. I'm not planning to use this pipe for an oiler system for the ram because I don't really want this sort of pipe you know around and about around the ram. I've got another idea for that. I'm just taking the head off so that I can horizontally drill into here to put in another oil way and one of those unions you know 1 8 BSP and this is about the only way I can hold this casting. Put a bolt through the middle here and clamp it down but I'm uncovering a problem with experience using the mill because this chamber here is filling up with oil, look, and it's sitting about this level here and you can see the big pool of it down there now I've broken that free. Now I don't know whether the oil is coming from the main gearbox of the mill or whether it's coming from this back chamber here. I haven't overfilled this back chamber because I've got the sight glass on it now that works. Um, there's a spinner there, in there, that's just a spinner, really a shield. But this whole plate here has an O-ring that goes all the way around it. Now I did find that this screw here, which holds this plate in, was, was sort of some way out when I got this machine. And I wonder if somebody's tried to take this out and damage the O-ring, I don't know. Or whether we've got some kind of leak from the main gearbox, you know, with oil being splashed up onto this spindle and coming out of here. If I use it a bit in the horizontal mode, I get an idea perhaps if it's coming out of here. The oil level's not going down, so I'm more inclined to think at the moment that it's this back gearbox on this head. I'm going to drill this 8 millimetres deep. I've started the tap off in here to make sure that everything's perpendicular. It's not so easy because you've got to preload the table screw a little bit and it's hard to get a feel for it, but that should be enough. We'll get it out of here and put the tap wrench on it, take it from there.
the union's fitted, bit of a struggle, this tap, 1 8 BSP, I got it about 40 years ago in a Whitworth set. First time I've used it I think, it was blunt. The lead on the front here was not ground correctly. I've had to do this by hand, it ain't going to be right is it? It worked, I've got four more to do at least. I'm going to look out for another tap sometime. I'm at the Auto Jumble, I'll get one for less than a pound I would think, maybe a pound. It's great when tools are cheap, but not when the cheap tools don't work. It's blooming annoying because you paid for something that ain't right. And quite often these tools are all the same, they all come from the same place. And it's hard to find anything that is quality. Anyway, moan, 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 moan. This is the back inspection cover from the Shaper. And at the moment there are four Euler points tapped one quarter. Now I'm going to put one eighth BSP unions in here as well. I'm drilling it 8.5. That's a bit small really for tapping 8th BSP. It should be 8.75 or 11.32. I haven't got an 11.32. I've got an S, but that's about 8.9. That's a bit too big. So we'll just have to manage with the 8.5 mil. I've set a depth stop. It's going to drill to about 8 millimetres. This is how it's shaping up the Euler system. So this is the top here. That long sticky out thing would be protected by the belt housing casing which goes there. So you wouldn't really be able to knock it. I'll make some kind of oil chamber which could look a bit like this. That's soldered onto there but the idea is I'd get a new piece of pipe, a new one of those and just drop it on the top as a cap. I've got a brass fitting which could go on the end here. I'd put a bracket on like that and it would go further back on the shaper. Pipe would come out, maybe into that end there. And then one of these would feed the main bull gear bearing directly. One into there maybe, but not a T, probably just one of those. And then another one to a T in the center here, feeding these two. That's the idea anyway. Now I said these were quarter. These were the original oilers that went in there. Well, they're 5 sixteenths. I don't know why I thought they were quarter but they definitely ain't. Looking at the bullgate oil feed, so the connection's just there. Now I've tried to figure this out. There's limited space, but I think we could get it from there down to that corner about there. I don't want to come out of the bottom because actually there's a, a hole there and you can imagine it collects oil in here and then the oil runs through that hole down into the center of the shaper and then through a hole at the bottom at this kind of level into a bucket which is underneath there. So I need to relieve part of the casing here so that that pipe can just sneak out there. I might put a P-clip on it somewhere. I don't know if it's necessary yet. Um, we'll see. That's the plan. And on this casing, this pipe is going to come across here, something like that, through there and out about here. Now, ideally, I'd bring it out further back here, but I can't really drill through this, I can't get in to do it. And also I want to be able to take this casing off without having to disconnect pipes and mess about like that. Um, it looks like there might not be quite enough relief there, but there's also a corresponding relief on the main body of the shaper, so there's plenty of room for that tube. So I'm going to make a mark with this burr, and then I'm just going to get a small end mill with a hand drill, and battery hand drill and see if I can just put a detent in there for that pipe to sneak out of. Now the pipe's going to have quite a sharp bend on it, but you know, I don't have room for a union. And if I had a union, that'd have the problem that I wouldn't be able to get this off without disconnecting pipes. So that's what we're doing. There we are. That's just below the surface. I might just put a nick on the main body of the shaper where the surface mates to ease it round this corner there. We'll see. These are the bits that we need for the oil holder. So this is a 22 millimeter compression joint fitting. I'll just machine the back of this off here to make it just an end stop. It's got a hole in already because I used it for something else in the past. 
but hopefully I can tap that 1 8 BSP. And that's essentially it really. And with this cap on the other end, as I said before, but it's not going to be this long, okay? It'll only be about that long. <laughs> and I'll put a strap on it there to hold it on. I made this, but it looked very cumbersome, I thought. So what I've actually done instead is I've drilled and tapped the end of this capped off pipe here, which was already soldered on. And although this is quite thin, where I'm pointing to here, the drill swaged this copper. So that actually this is screwing into quite a long length of thread. And I think that's much neater. Yeah, I think that's much neater, look. I've been looking for the right location for this, and I think somewhere on this rail. But I'll have it over at an angle, perhaps there, because I don't want the pipe anywhere close to the knob that I need to pull to open that, because I'm sure I get my fingers through it. And then from there, it's only a short length to here, to perhaps go into the end of this long connector. I'm making a former for this bracket here. This is just 15 millimeter pipe, just squash flat. Put that in there. This socket is around about 22 mil. Um, I might just hit it. Or I might actually squeeze it in the vise, I don't know yet. Or I might just hit my fingers. Mm hmm. Sort of happening, but not quite right yet. This job has got completely out of control. I've made a former with a lower and an upper. Put that in the press. I hope I can bend this piece of copper the way I want it. I don't think the chances are very high. Well, this is never going to work, is it? But I'm going to literally press on to the end. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> well, <laughs> mm, hang on. It's kind of right. <laughs> it's kind of right, but kind of rubbish. Um, hmm. Except it's gone the wrong way. So do I need to do that? That's what I need to do. Look, do you know? You know that kind of works. <laughs> right. I'm going to solder that on. Oh, it's silly, isn't it? Stop talking, Paul. Stop talking. I've got the strap soldered on now. Excuse me. Oh. I buffed it up a little and sprayed it with a bit of varnish. I'm not that bothered what it looks like. I just don't want it to go green, that's all. It took a lot longer than I think it should have done, but I'm happy with the result. I've just ordered up another couple of these fittings to finish this off. I mean, I made a guess to start with what I was going to need, but I'm not happy with the Bulgay main bearing being fed from a T because if the oil comes this way, I don't know what's going in there and what's actually getting as far as the Bulgay main bearing. So I will need to put a T in somewhere though, because I don't have enough ports on this manifold and I'm going to put it there, sort of a mid-air T, in between that and that. Those two, uh, they oil the idler gear that we had out and where we extended that shaft. This one oils the thrust bearing at the back of the pulley clutch. And this oils the other end of the power shaft. So the power shaft is here, the idler shaft is here. So in a couple of days they'll arrive, I'll get that finished, but now We've got this far, I can put the bull gear back on and we can put the pulley clutch back on. So we're putting the thing back together now. I've dropped the bull gear inside and I've mounted it to its shaft. It's just four screws holding that on, tighten it up with a 5 16 Allen. It's a bit tricky because the 
shaft and the gear are kind of in free space. And as you try and tighten them, they want to get away from you, but I just about managed it. I think they're tight enough. The boss on the end of this shaft is a really snug fit into the bull gear. There's an index mark popped on there, and that's where the short screw goes. Four screws, 732 Allen, all the same length, and awkward. <laughs> I can use up some of that ISO 220 oil that I think is too thick for the mill. Seems smooth enough, doesn't it? Lining up my pit marks to make sure I get this the right way around so the tapered peg goes in the right way. Mm, nearly right. Where's the pin? There's the pin. And that's the... Uh, pip is where the fat end is. I remember that now. 